Look out for whales, blue spouts from a distance, they're good for that. Also, let's cover rules as you move around the boat. Uh, just make sure there's no running, jumping, break dancing, gymnastics, pole dancing, anything like that. Uh, keep your feet on the blue deck at all times. If your feet are on the blue, you are probably in a safe position. If your feet are on the road, you are probably in an unsafe position. Uh, so make sure your feet are always on something blue. Uh, that is especially important on the lower deck towards the front part of the boat. Uh, that is called the pole. You can, uh, you can stand up there. You can even sit on the ledge, but only if your feet are on the blue part of the deck. Uh, no propping your legs up. Uh, small children, I'd recommend uh, standing up there. Make sure you always hold on with two hands. Uh, like I said, the front of the boat, that's the very bumpiest part. And we don't want anybody going overboard. Also, folks, our uh, bathroom's at the base of the stairs. The so room is on the left side of the boat. The room is on the right side. Such thing is also at the base of the stairs. So if you can get to the touch tank, they're not the same thing. Yep, now we get to hold up traffic for once. This is great. Remember guys, you, guys, you get to wave at the car. Wave at them. They get to wave at the cars, but they might wave at us with one finger, so just be ready. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's like a shark. Well, people from Wildwood watch my YouTube channel, they're gonna be like, all right, that's that ass. Shell like a clam knife. 
He's gonna pry it all the way open. Once he gets the clam all the way open, what he does next, he's gonna steam it up with a little garlic and butter, add some Old Bay seasoning, and eat it for lunch. Nah, I'm just kidding. But they do actually use their, their shell to pry it open. They pry it open just like that. Uh, they use that spiky tongue to scrape away the clam from its shell and slurp it down into their belly, which is found right down in there. Am I on Facebook Live? No, not live, not live, yeah. <laughs> just a video. Okay, yeah, just a video. I thought I was going to wave to all your friends. No, not, not yet. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have a question for you guys. Uh, can a snail change from shell to shell? Like, can it come out of this one and go into another shell? Yes. Let's take a book. Who says yes? So this is their growth edge from here all the way to here. As they go, they add layers of snail snot to their shell. That snail snot, that slime, is ionically charged. It attracts calcium, magnesium, strontium, all kinds of different elements from the seawater, and it hardens a new layer of shell. So they keep adding layers of slime, layers of shell as they get bigger and bigger. What's really cool is that also sharpens that edge. That sharpens the edge where they crack open the clam shells. You see how it's broken a little bit there? That's from the last time that he uh, cracked open a clam shell. As he adds layers of slime, it kind of makes it nice and sharp again, breaks open more shells. Pretty cool. Is that the same thing? Uh, that's the same type of shell, uh, but this is not a live whelk. It's just an empty shell. Oh, actually, there might be a crab in there. I feel something. <laughs> because it's dull and uninteresting and sits on the bottom all day because uh, it bores into seashells. We also have this little orange stripe. Looks like just a piece of dirt, right? That is a colony of tiny animals called bryozoans. Bryozoans, if you looked at them under a microscope, they would look like a Venus flytrap. You guys ever see a Venus flytrap plant? Opens up, they capture flies, they eat them. So these guys, they, uh, they capture plankton. Plankton just by, they close on the plankton, they digest it, open up their mouth again. Pretty cool, they're kind of like little mini, they're hard to see without a microscope, but they're very, very small. That's probably like 200 animals, they're just even smaller than the corals. What is the ospreys there, guys? Marker number four. Oh, I was wondering where they weren't on the nest earlier. I pointed <laughs> out, like, oh, there's the ospreys, oh wait, not there. <laughs> okay, we also got a really strange animal here. What's this guy? Uh, it's spiky. It is spiky. Let me know what it's called. It's called a C something, starts with a U. Urchin, you got it. sea urchin. So sea urchins are close cousins of sea stars, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. Uh, they're in a group of animals called echinoderms, which means spiny skin. What do you think they use that sp uh, spiny skin for? What are those spines for on the top? Protection. Protection, you got it. If you were a fish, do you think you want to take a big bite of a sea urchin? No. No. Oh. Nah, unless you got one a mouthful of spikes in your mouth. Be like splinters on your tongue. Don't beavers eat it? Beavers? Something. Oh, otters. You're right. Otters. Sea otters. Yeah, yeah. At first I was like really confused, but yeah, otters. Close cousin of a beaver. Yeah, so otter, sea otters, what they do is they'll come along, they'll grab the sea urchins off the bottom, and uh, they're really smart animals. They'll take like a, they'll get like a big shell, or actually like a flat rock like this one. They'll put the rock on their belly, and they'll take the sea urchin and they'll go smash, smash, smash. And they'll crack off the spines, and they get at the soft parts of the sea urchin on the inside. Oh, this guy's got a little sea anemone on his body, too. Uh, sea urchins are pretty cool animals. Uh, they're really, really strange animals, too. Their mouth is all the way down by their feet. Take a look at their mouth. There's five teeth that come together in the middle, right in the very center. That's the bottom of their body. So their mouth is by their feet. So take a really close look. You can see it inside there. That is their mouth. So the mouth is right next to their feet, which are suction cups. Wow. So imagine instead of having two feet to move around like we do, Imagine if you had a hundred suction cups and you walked around the bottom like this. Imagine you could be like Spider-Man, you could walk up walls. You could walk upside down if you wanted to. Pretty cool. So they use that so they don't get washed away with the current. Helps them stay attached so they don't get eaten by a predator. So their mouth is by their feet and then they poop out the top of their head. Sea urchins are the true buttheads of the animal world. 
So imagine a day in the life of a sea urchin. Imagine you crawl along the bottom, you're kind of chewing up food with your toes and pooping out your ears. That'd be pretty weird, right? <laughs> Actually, we got one more fish. Yeah, you guys see the sea bass anywhere in here? Oh, it's right there. There he is. 